Uh, as Ali said, my name's Mike Barcassi. I'll be walking you through some advanced processing functions that are inside of Context Capture Editor today. Uh, so we'll start off with just a couple slides and then we'll get into a live demonstration. Okay, so today we'll be looking at Context Capture Editor for advanced processing of your reality models. So hopefully everybody on the call is aware of what Context Capture is. Um, we will touch on that somewhat. But essentially today what we want to look at is Context Capture Editor. So we're going to look at how we can perform clips and edits within this editing environment. Uh, we're going to see how we can make these models useful by extracting ground or removing the vertical structures from the models. Uh, also, we'll look at a couple ways of generating break lines within the models. Anybody working in um, most design capacities will want to generate these break lines for use in um, you know, some other form of mesh uh, down the road. Uh, also, we want to touch on, <clears throat> excuse me, how to produce ortho photos and then finish up with volumes within Context Capture Editor. So just real quick, if you're not familiar with what a reality model is, it's essentially the capturing of existing conditions in 3D using uh, one or a combination of devices, including handheld cameras, laser scanners, uh, whether mounted on a UA UAV or stationary or even your iPhone. Um, these images are used to support different applications such as mapping, design, construction, inspection, and asset management um, by using the models that we develop in context capture. So this is reality modeling, essentially modeling a 3D environment at any given time with a camera, scanner, or a combination. So what we end up with is this 3D model, which is really cool, and it's really neat to be able to send to your friends a web URL with these models. Um, but what really, to make these models useful, we need is the ability to go from a 3D model like you saw in the previous slide to something like this. So um, while once it hits the 2D paper environment, it's lost, you know, uh, majority of its intelligence, uh, it's still a requirement today in most cases. So uh, what we want to look at though is how to use the model uh, through the entire process. So not just from the capture and looking and reviewing the model, but then extracting ground, uh, inserting some break lines, maybe doing some clips on the model, uh, and then getting volumes out of the model and before moving into your other design applications with the model. So that's what we'll be looking at today. And uh, we'll jump out here and then get into the live part of the demo. So the one thing with context capture is that when we work with it to develop the models, these models, um, as we're working with the images and so forth, they require a lot of processing. And so it doesn't always lend itself well to a live demonstration. Uh, however, today we'll be mainly in the context capture editor environment and we'll be taking a model like you see here on the screen and in this case we're just in the, the um, context capture or the acute 3d viewer so this is a, a free downloadable viewer and you can pass this on to your clients and uh, colleagues and so forth and they too can then open up these models but more importantly you know we want to move this model into microstation so uh, I know they, these sessions can be interactive. I'm not sure how much anyone knows or has worked within Adobe, but I'm just curious, a show of hands, if you can figure out how to raise your hand. Um, how many of you are working in a connect environment? 
because really to leverage these models you're going to need to work in the connect environment in most all your applications that consume these models and um, if you're not familiar with it uh, I'm going to pull open um, context capture editor and this is essentially uh, running on a, a DGN platform with the ribbon up top and this is our connect edition and so what context capture editor is is basically a DGN tool that gives you the add-on tools for working with the context capture models so the first thing we're going to do here and um, I actually see a couple people checked off that they are working in connect so hopefully this will look familiar to some of you um, but the first thing we're going to do is come in here and simply attach a reality mesh so there are two different ways you can attach a reality mesh the first is the same way we used to attach any reference file and that's in the attach reference dialog however if we just use the reference attachment for our reality mesh which by the way if you're working with select series 4 um, it is possible to attach a reality mesh in select series 4 as a reference file however references are somewhat limited to what we can do with the models once they're attached so apart from just viewing them we really can't do too much else uh, even to clip a reference you can really only make one clip internal to a reference and so it's very limited so we're going to use the reality model attachment and we'll come in and just navigate and I'm going to pick my project um, as soon as I can figure out where I put it okay so the first thing you're going to notice is what kind of files can I attach so by default or as planned we can attach a 3mx file which was the um, original format that worked within our microstation environment or we can now attach the new 3sm file so the difference between these two files I'll explain as we go along but to start we're going to use this 3mx file now when I load this in uh, just a note you could actually load it in from a web URL so if this is hosted up on the web somewhere we could grab that URL and attach it um, but either way we're going to attach and apply the coordinate system so this is a 3mx and I'll say OK if we decide to use a 3sm file we're going to have to first apply the coordinate system and then attach the file so this works well in this case because it set my coordinate system without me having to know what it was okay so overall you know the 3mx or the 3sm would appear the exact same and again I'm going to get into the differences in just a moment but some of the things we'll notice with this scene is um, first off that some of the treetops are missing here and that's because this was all captured with oblique images from a drone and no nadir images however there was also captured with this scene um, ground imagery so we have some areas that are even higher resolution so I'm leaving this uh, mesh dialog open because the first thing I want to do is just perform a couple clips on this mesh just to point out as I mentioned before that um, we want to make these meshes useful so one way of doing so is to give you the ability to eliminate a portion of the mesh so that your design can stick through the mesh and um, basically any connect addition will have this capability not just editor 
And for this, what we'll do is we'll come in and we'll just set up, let's set up um, a couple levels here real quick. So we're going to need this seed level as we extract ground in just a little bit. So the first thing we'll do is we'll draw um, a shape and we could take the time and draw a real nice polygon around the, the building. But in this case, I'm just going to um, create a shape and I can just barely see the shape through that building there. And next thing I want to do is simply mask the reality mesh. And before I do that, let's do a second one, because as I said, um, we're going to be able to um, mask multiple shapes. So I'm going to identify the mask element. And this other one over here. And I just held down control to select both of them. And then I select it. And I guess because I drew them on an angle, it actually clipped two times. Um, up through my mesh. So if I was smart about this, I would have um, came in and drew those shapes <laughs> on a plane as opposed to that. But uh, let's do this. Let me just make those much smaller. And you can see what I mean. So you want to draw your, your shapes with your plane lock on. And to the boundary that you need. Okay. So again, these shapes can be used or these clips can be used to then have your design um, come up through your model, giving it a realistic appearance. Okay. All right. So now we want to extract some volume out of our mesh. Now, or, or, I'm sorry, not volume, but get rid of the vertical structures is what we're going to do next. And we could use either a 3MX or a 3SM. And you, you may say to yourself, well, we've seen some other software out there that we can um, bring the same type of models into MicroStation uh, or, you know, some other CAD software, but we have to use OBJs or FBXs. What's the difference? And the difference is just like in the um, viewer here where we have our model, our model, the 3MX and the 3SM are both multi-resolution models. So you see how the mesh gets denser as we zoom in. And if you look close, you'll see the mesh is really dense around this building. And that's because there was ground imagery captured. And uh, in fact, it's, um, you can see in under the porch roof with that. So that multi-resolution mesh also comes across when we work in MicroStation. So if I were to change the settings so we could see the mesh, we would see the exact same thing here. And this allows us to work very efficiently. I mean, can you imagine moving a couple million or a billion points around in this file? It would eventually just bog down and we wouldn't be able to work. But because we're using a multi-resolution 3MX or 3SM, we can work in this. So uh, we're going to extract out the volume. And the way that we do this is we come in here to our extract. And we go to, uh, we could use the quick ground extraction and just do a limited area, but I'm going to extract the entire ground from here. And the first thing I want to do is measure um, the width of my building. And once I get that width in there, uh, I'm going to set my maximum triangle edge. Now this setting you want to think of as where your surveyors are going to set up 
to create their ground shots. And, um, you know, you can come out here and you can say, well, you know, they're going to set up every uh, 39 feet or something like that and capture a point every 39 feet. So uh, there's a terrain variation and that's going to dictate uh, an algorithm change that uh, will be more efficient when we have terrain that gradually slopes or uh, if the terrain is slopes or changes very abruptly we can set this higher here and uh, really it's just a matter of experimenting with it and getting comfortable with it so uh, the next thing I want to make sure I'm checking is seeds because this is going to put points or these are seed points that get created because I may want to then turn around and generate my own seed points depending on my output. And this will be more apparent once we process this. Um, finally, we have our outputs of a terrain, a scalable mesh, and a classified point cloud. Uh, I'm gonna turn off the point cloud for now just because it's not needed, although we kind of create one in the background anyway. And uh, then I'm gonna uh, come in here and select this mesh and add a point over here and then it's going to create a new tin so I'll call this tin demo and yes that's a geopack tin file so we could take this tin into an older version of geopack or open roads technology and work with it uh, we're also going to create a scalable terrain model and a 3SM. And again, the 3SM is just a, a much more robust uh, scalable model that we'll be using within our civil applications and um, down the road other applications. And that mesh can be both 2.5 and, and fully 3D. So um, this is going to process and actually depending on the um, settings that I use uh, it could take several minutes now hopefully I didn't pick too tight of a triangle tolerance for this demo and hopefully we'll finish up here in about a minute um, so a little more while this is processing on the seeds output what happens is when this algorithm runs um, points are generated on the underside of the the mesh and these are seed points so they are finding ground and once this is completed if we need to we can go in and add our own seed points or even before we run it uh, we could actually add our own seed points to the mesh and so we'll just let it run So now at this stage, the um, second phase of the ground extraction is going on. And again, it's creating multiple file formats here, and then it completes. Okay. So once it's completed, you see the red points. Those are my seed points. So now you know why I set the line weight as high as I did. And again if I had a little more time and we were all a little more patient I could have made those triangles smaller and got a much more accurate um, terrain from that uh, but now you see you can kind of see parts of our terrain sticking through our reality mesh um, but you see the vertical structures have been removed by and large from the mesh now there's a couple problems with this mesh and um, that we extracted and some of them uh, are simply due to the algorithm running and the grid size that we picked and so you see on the perimeter I'm missing the basketball court over here in this corner uh, along with some stuff on the side so we're going to fix that we're going to add some seed points to the, the um, file and then we'll reprocess our mesh 
Now, the other thing, if we look underneath here, that we're going to see is that um, when this was processed, when the um, file was processed in context capture, there were what we call artifacts, and they were below the mesh. And the user that produced this did not clean this up. And um, you know, it's kind of a shame on him. Uh, but since it was me, I'm allowed to pick on him. But we can start by simply selecting these points and deleting them. Because then when we process this the next time, um, with that point gone, it, it will eliminate that triangulation there. Um, some other things we could do is we could um, turn off Let's change some view settings here and we'll go from illustration just to good old wireframe and we'll come into our home button and it's not what I wanted I wanted a reality mesh dialog and I'm going to turn the display off You'll see too now there's a 3SM. So this is our 2.5D file that's been created. I'll turn that display off. And so what we have now is our scalable terrain. So anyone that's worked with Bentley Map before is familiar with this. Uh, this scalable terrain model can be converted to an actual terrain model. So if we go to um, extract up here, I think there's. Um, Somewhere up here, there's um, a button to do an extraction. And I don't want to get caught up, but um, trust me on that. This can be converted to a terrain model. You can email me afterwards. Uh, but let's set the properties on this so that we can see the um, features. So we could um, turn the triangles off and drill in and turn our contours on. And we can smooth those contours out. And of course we see the um, divot from those points. Now if we think some more of these points are rogue points, we can get rid of them while we're in this view. And so this is, um, you know, again, a good reason to delete or display our contours because we can get rid of these points that we feel are artifacts. Okay. So at this time, I'm actually okay with all that. Uh, I'm going to turn my 3MX back on and I'm going to place another or some more seed points along this edge and so um, I'll find my place point command and I'm going to change this to seed and now I simply want to uh, have this snap to the mesh. So it's snapping to the reality mesh. And this will allow it to triangulate out to the edge. And of course, if I were doing this in a production environment, I'd probably want to be a little more accurate and zoom in a little tighter. Um, but the other thing you're going to notice is um, up along here, if I were to turn this 3SM on, I can see, let's, let's change the um, look of that 3SM. Um, there it is. No, that's a 3MX. I 
having trouble selecting it. Let's do this. Okay, now I got it selected and I can highlight it and looking for where I can change the symbology right here in the properties I'll go to wireframe and so now down here again along this building if I look close my triangles are cutting into the building so I may want to place some C points again in there You want to make sure they snap to the mesh and that you don't place them underneath the mesh. All right, so now I've placed some more seed points in, and now I can make sure nothing is selected and I can rerun my process. So we'll come back in here to extract and we'll use the ground extraction. And this time I'm going to go from automatic to points and I'm going to use the seed points on my level seed. Um, I want to make sure nothing's selected. And then it's just going to ask me to identify the reality mesh. And I'm going to make sure I get that mesh. And then accept it. And this time I'll generate a final. and that'll run. So while that's running, and it actually should run a little faster than the first time, uh, I want to um, jump over to another model uh, where I can point out a couple features. It looks like um, I don't want to go too much over my 30 minutes. So let's let that process and we'll jump in this over so um, one of the things we want to do is well two real quick things first we'll start by showing um, how to generate volumes and um, for volumes if we go into the analyze portion of our ribbon uh, we'll see we have a volume calculation now for that and let me just turn some stuff off here Okay. Display our reality mission. For this, we, we actually need the 3MX, or I'm sorry, the 3SM format. So right now we have a 3MX loaded. So you may say, well, I don't have a 3SM. Um, we produced these models six months ago, and there was no 3SM. How do I get it? And the way you get it is you simply load the 3MX file format in the editor. You go up to edit, and then you're going to convert the 3MX to a 3SM. So um, once you do this, you just navigate out, grab your 3MX, and then specify the output file name to 3SM. And I don't want to replace that. And basically, you just click the convert button at that time. And it will convert your 3MX to a 3SM. OK, so in this case, we've already done this. So we're going to load 
the 3SM. And let's just turn this off. So you can see um, it looks pretty much the exact same. And we're going to load a second file because in order to do volumes, you really need something to compare it to. So what we have is uh, actually with this project, uh, before I load it, let me show you. They went in and um, this project had some ground piles. And they did some earthwork in this area. And so now what we want to do is we want to compare this area to the, the groundwork file. And the beauty of that 3SM is we can actually create a 3SM out of uh, any tin type file. And I guess that's a topic for another tech talk. Um, but we're going to rotate this guy to the top view. And I'm going to um, attach, and hopefully I can quickly find this file. And I guess it's called, uh, let's see the right So which one's that? And I think I'll try this. I think this is it. Okay, it is. So again, this is it's just it has um smooth shading on this 3SM, but this is the um ground 3SM. And so to do the volumes, we'll simply go in here to the um, extract, or rather analyze volume calculation. And uh, I'm gonna just use a block. So um, the first thing I'll do is select the existing ground, and then I'll select the ground And let me do this again. I know what I did wrong. Sorry, I don't have a shape out there to select. That's the problem. Place of shape. I guess I didn't need that shape. And now it's going to generate um, a TIFF file. a table and it will attach the TIFF file so right now it's basically building that raster and it's computing the volumes between the two okay so now I'll turn these off so you can see what it did so basically it built this raster and you can develop your own ramps for hot and cold uh, and it generated as well the volumes and it, it put those in a spreadsheet which I forget where I placed it but you can see the cut and fill volumes here so we have a net difference of 461,964 cubic feet in that area so um, that is our volume analysis. And then the last thing that I want to leave you guys with is uh, I'm going to turn this back on. And let's just delete this raster. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. Control Z. OK. 
okay. So we're going to produce an ortho photo. So in context capture, if you're familiar with it, you can produce orthos right in the software. Uh, but here, what you, if you're in the editor, you can um, produce one large ortho photo. So you don't have to worry about the tiling effect in context capture. And uh, what you're going to do is simply come into the deliver ribbon, click on the merge button, and you're going to define what you want the ortho of the area. And what I found is, uh, well, you want to use only your reality mesh, and well, at least I only want to, but you could actually, if you had design elements in here, you could use those as well. And uh, I will use uh, pixel size and sheet size, because if you notice by default, your sheet size is going to be very small. And so what you want to do is change your pixel size, and you want to maintain a DPI uh, for good resolution. You want to be above, I, I would think you want to be above five, 600 dots per inch. Uh, and again, you know, your sheet size, you probably want somewhere around um, 48 inches oops, by 36 or 30 or something like that, so 36. And then the, here the pixel size, so you see right now my DPI dropped to 17 and 16. That's going to make a very grainy image. So uh, if you try to print that on something that size, it's not going to look very good. So you want to change that to some value like a pixel size of 0 0.05 and watch. You'll see now I'm up around 665 DPI and you can just click run. and the, problem is if I click run right now it's going to take um, you know maybe a minute or so to run but uh, I don't need to because uh, I've already done it before this presentation so um, I'll just come back here to my home and uh, I'm going to open up my reality mesh and turn that off and then I'll open up my raster manager and I think it was this last one was the good one. And so I have pretty decent resolution. Mm, actually, no, that one wasn't the good one. Maybe this is. So, yeah, that one's a little better. Uh, again, I was playing around with uh, the settings and actually don't think that is. I think I deleted the best attachment um, yeah right when we got in so uh, but you can see the difference that those settings make and that is where you're going to adjust it to get a cleaner looking ortho photo and then finally we'll go back here and we'll look at our reality model that one on turn that off and let's go into our scalable terrain model and we'll remove that one so now we just have the final And you can see how the triangulation went between the points. Now, folks, if I were doing this in production, my triangles, uh, I would mesh it much closer than this. Uh, it might take a little more computer time, but it would be worth the quality of the output. And we didn't get to the break lines, but it looks like we're out of time. So at this time, uh, I want to take some questions, and hopefully you all have some. 